evening and welcome to Would I Lie to You, the show where being a fraud gets a reward. On David Mitchell's team tonight, a man named Richard who's an adjudicator on a BBC One quiz show. So when I call him Clever Dick, I'm being factual, not rude. From Pointless, <laughs> Richard Osman. <laughs> and uh, a comedian and actor whose distinctive looks can only be described as when Goliath ate Rick Mayle. It's Greg <laughs> Davis. <laughs> on Lee Mack's team tonight, uh, a comedian who once told me he was as sane and normal as the next man. Although, at the time, he was standing next to Vic Reeves. It's Bob Mortimer! <laughs> and uh, in Holby City, she murdered people, had affairs with doctors, got pregnant and was attacked by patients. It really was quite an episode. <laughs> it's Patsy Kensit! <laughs> And uh, we start with round one. It's Home Truths, where our panellists each read out a statement from the card in front of them. To make things harder, they've never seen the card before, so they've no idea what they'll be faced with. It's up to the opposing team to sort the fact from the fiction. Greg is first up. Greg, would you reveal all? At school, I invented a game called Snorkel Parker Music Practice Room. <laughs> there we are. Uh, Lee's team, what do you think? What was the game called again? Um, <laughs> it was called Snorkel Parker Music Practice Room. Right, and can you describe the game to us? Myself and um, several friends, uh, we all had Snorkel Parkers. Well, what is a Snorkel yeah. Parker for some, for some of the younger viewers? <laughs> it's, um, it, it's a large uh, hooded coat with a fur-lined Oh, collar. the one that comes out at the front. Yeah. And, it's for, okay. and you, can, you can zip it up so that it comes right up and uh, so that only your eyes are visible. Right. Can you describe the rules? Imagine we've never met, I've got my snorkel parker. <laughs> what would happen next? Well, then you and I, Lee, will go to the music practice room when... I'm not um, falling for this again. <laughs> and you zip up your snorkel parker... Yeah. And then you, you, when someone's practicing their violin with a violin teacher in the music practice room, yeah. you duck down b below the window, and then you just come up with your snorkel parker on. <laughs> so just imagine you're a historical reenactment society. Oh. You've got your members there. I suppose. I suppose. How I, would you? Well, I'd have to fully demonstrate it with, by using my um, making an ad. Feel free to ask parker. Richard and David to help you out on this. Will you help me out with this? Um, well, I mean, I, 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 you see, this is one of the moments where... <laughs> <laughs> I don't like having to... <laughs> all right. Do it? Yeah, all right. Below our desk. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, if, so if you imagine that this was the music practice room and... And there was some someone in there having a lunchtime a lunchtime yeah. violin lesson. Yeah. You you would wait until they were in mid tutorial. And right, then, I'm picturing it, yeah. And then together, yeah. after three. Okay. Yeah. One, two, three. Four. <laughs> That's it, really. <laughs> Was the secret to the game the fact that they never knew who you were? You no, were they wouldn't know who you were because yeah. there's only your eyes showing. And he'd tell you to go away, so you would all duck down away, and then you'd leave it for a minute. And then, come back and then up you'd up just come back up again. Yeah. 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 What age were you? Maybe... They'd tell me you weren't one of the teachers. <laughs> no, maybe 13, 14. Right the way through to when you left? Right, right through till sixth form, yeah. You, you never got told to stop this, or you got... A... Yeah, well, they, would, they would bang on the window and be really furious for with us. For five years, they were banging down. on the window. They never once thought to come out. They did. They'd say, lads, it's getting really boring. <laughs> but you and, see... And we know you are, Greg, because you're eight foot six. <laughs> But just out of interest, by show of hands, who would like to play Snorkel Parker Music Practice Room? I'd like to yeah. I'm quite keen on I've, the game. I've already played it, I didn't really enjoy it. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds ridiculous. I mean, the last it time... It does I... sound utterly ridiculous. Go. It's almost as if you're lying. <laughs> Do you think he is lying, Lee? What are you going to say on this one? Well, I, I actually believe him. I could just see you doing that for... for... Kicks and giggles. Bob, which way are you leaning with this? Well, it's got the anticipation, it's got the jeopardy, <laughs> it's got the lot. Yeah. What a game! <laughs> Greg, Something tells you me you're going to get a phone call from Waddington's. <laughs> <laughs> if this gets picked up, this is 
Just because I've talked about it now, it's mine, right? Oh, it's only yours yeah. if you really played it. If it's a lie, then you have a copyright. Well, who's it? If it is a lie, and I've just read it off this thing, whose idea is it? Well, well, I'm the person who wrote the lie. <laughs> I'd like to. I'd like to maintain the rights to Balaclava Sports Hall. <laughs> <laughs> if, yeah. if anyone's interested. <laughs> Right, Lee, it's time to take a guess. What are you going to say? We're going for truth. You're saying it's true. OK. Uh, Greg, were you telling the truth? Or <laughs> were you telling the truth? Well, oh, right, because that would make me utterly pathetic, wouldn't it? Yes, I was telling the truth. Yes, it's true. Uh, Greg did invent a game called Snorkel Parker Music Practice Room. At school, Greg was very popular with the other pupils. Not surprising, really, considering they'd created him in a science lesson. <laughs> Uh, Richard, you're next. I once buried a badger with the banker from Deal or No Deal. <laughs> Lee's team. I know the programme, but who is that? Who is the banker? We never hear the banker, do we? Yeah. No, I'm not allowed to tell you. If I told you, I'd have to bury you alongside the badger, I'm afraid. <laughs> oh, so the badger found out. Is that what happened to him? <laughs> What's Lee's burying the badger, badger a euphemism for? <laughs> <laughs> This banker, mm -hmm. can you describe him to me, please? Yes, I could do. <laughs> He's just a guy, like you and I. Somewhere in between well, you which and which one I. is it? <laughs> <laughs> Somewhere in the middle. Why do you know the guy from... I know that I, way back when I, I used to be the producer of Deal or No Deal. Right, um, and what's his name? Uh, he is called The Banker. No, what's his real name? I can't you... tell you what his real name what? is. It's on the credits of the show. <laughs> <laughs> tell us. What does it say on the credits of the show? It says The Banker as himself. Why, a, a, why was the badger dead? Yeah. Uh, we hit it with a car, unfortunately. What were you doing in the car with him? Uh, uh, about 70. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> we were on holiday together. Where were you on holiday? Uh, badger country, Cornwall. <laughs> was Edmunds there? Sorry, I'm not part of this. I'm like, <laughs> yeah. It's a good question, though, Greg. Was Noel there? No, it was a holiday. <laughs> <Can> <laughs> <I> <laughs> 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 Before you yeah. buried the badger, did yeah. we put him in a box <laughs> and then there's loads of other empty boxes? <laughs> yeah. And then you stood there and you had to choose which box it was. <laughs> Dead squirrel, wrong box. <laughs> I think it's very sad that the badger died and everything. But yes. Why was so much trouble to dig the grave? Because the banker's wife was with us. Oh, and... can you tell us her name or is she worked for, <laughs> I can she worked for the Iranian government? <laughs> <laughs> what is the name of the banker? <laughs> <laughs> Was this during the day or of the evening? It was. It was late at night. Were late you at night. Were you, had you had a few? I had. I had had a few. Yeah. So you went and got spent. driving. Then? No, I wasn't driving. He Who was say, driving if he's banker? not going to say the name of the banker, of <laughs> deal or deal, he's not going to national television. Going, I was driving. I was mullered. <laughs> <laughs> say badger. I mean none. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then what? The yeah. banker's wife then says we should bury it. The banker's wife. It sounded like Cluedo. This go on. <laughs> To which the obvious answer is we're not going to bury it. It's sort of it's two in the morning. Uh, right. It's really cold and it's dark. What what's happened then? So the badger is dead. Right. Yeah. Sad occasion. I'm not underestimating the sadness of it. And he's, there's probably a badger wife and badger children at home. So that's. Right. I accept Are that you not allowed sad. to say their names either? <laughs> <laughs> so you checked the gender of the badger then. You know it was a male badger, <laughs> or a female badger in a same-sex relationship. <laughs> Who've adopted a small badger, <laughs> perhaps an orphan badger without a home in need I think of you're uh, rest? Wildly what? overestimating the sophistication of the badger community. <laughs> but what happens next? Uh, we went back, got yeah. spades. Yeah. Went back to where the badger lay prone, buried it, said a few words. What did you Which, say? Yeah. Just said, Lord protect this badger. <laughs> or worse than that effect. If only you'd have said it an hour earlier. <laughs> So go on, Lord protect this badger. I think I, I said a few words about the family of the badger and <laughs> gave some words. Tell of us apology. the word. I want the words. Ah. I apologise to the family of this badger, <laughs> wherever they may be, because <laughs> I'm guessing they're nearby. Yeah. Put some stones on it. Went back home. Started drinking again. Yeah. So, Lee, what's it going to be? Yeah. Truth or lie? Oh, I think it's true, Lee. If Bob thinks it's true. You think it's true? I'm yeah. Yeah. true. Patsy. <clears throat> I don't believe the badger bit. I think the badger That's bit... That's quite essential <laughs> to the story. 
But everything else you think, believe. I believe he knows the banker. Right. I think he knows the banker's wife. Well, there's I your answer. Think... There's your answer. We think it's true apart from the badger bit. <laughs> <laughs> Lee, Lee, it's time to make well, it. Well, it's true. It's true. You're Probably saying it's true. Um, <laughs> Richard, were you telling the truth or were you telling a lie? I was telling the truth. <laughs> yes, it's true. Uh, Richard did bury a badger with the banker from deal or no deal. Patsy, you're up next. When I was younger, I was regularly paid to babysit Marvin, my neighbour's pet dog, who had died and been stuffed. <laughs> David's team. Right. So that you were, ba you were babysitting the dog only post-mortem? Yes, after, after he died. What did your duties involve? Well, they were el elderly people. They'd leave out, um, like, food and water. And what I used to do, because I felt so sorry for them, was I would sort of pour a bit of the water away and, like, put half the food and stick it in, you know, the rubbish under some <laughs> kitchen or... No, they, they so were... they come back to, you see? Yeah, he's alive. He is alive. <laughs> they thought the dog was alive, did they? Well, no, they, they can't have, but they behaved... I mean, it was just... It was a very unusual family, and she, she had pictures, framed pictures of him when he was alive and when he was stuffed. How do you it know really... the difference? The well, photographs? Because it didn't... It wasn't a good stuffing. Uh, but, but, I suppose the, the stuffed one, he always looked exactly the same wherever he was. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, his expression didn't change much. <laughs> what sort of dog had Marvin been Yorkshire before? Yorkshire Terrier. Right. And, in what... and we had a Yorkshire Terrier called Pepper, who was alive, I'd like that to say. That was rubbing their nose in it, yeah. wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Stuffed but, peppers. But our dog... <laughs> <laughs> was, like, totally untrained. I mean, adorable, but... Whereas really... Marvin was so well behaved. <laughs> what position was Marvin stuffed in? What was... Standing. Did he have a, did he have a facial expression? If there was any kind of emotion coming like from... Like this, like that. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, he was angry. Like he died <laughs> in, a, in a battle. During maybe, the... maybe he was stuffed it was... to death. Yeah. It was... <laughs> <laughs> a way to go. It... If I had a stuffed dog that was stood up, I'd put one of its legs in the bucket, in a bucket, then I'd always know where that bucket was. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think, David? Which way are you uh, leaning what on you this? Think, Richard? Sounds quite convincing. You, you're convinced? Well, I think it's impressively told if it's a lie. I think impressively told. A you're lot not, of the detail. You're not an actress, are you, Patsy? <laughs> 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 well, I think it's a lie. My instinct is it's the truth. We're going to say it's true. You're saying it's true. OK. Oh, no. Patsy Kensett, were you telling us the truth or were you telling us a lie? That story was a lie. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's a lie. Patsy wasn't regularly paid to babysit her neighbour's stuffed pet dog. <laughs> So, at the end of that round, uh, Lee's team are in the lead by three points to nil. Well done, team. Well done. Our next round is called This Is My, where we bring on a mystery guest who has a close connection to one of our panellists. Uh, this week, each of David's team will claim it's them that has the genuine connection to the guest, and it's up to Lee's team to spot who's telling the truth. So, please welcome this week's special guest, Pauline. <laughs> Richard, what is Pauline to you? This is Pauline. Last year we met at a Snoop Dogg gig and we bonded because we were the two oldest fans in the room. <laughs> David, how do you know Pauline? This is Pauline. When I was a cub, she was the Arcala and she had to take me out of the scout hut once for asking too many questions when we were being given a talk by the police. <laughs> yeah. And finally, Greg, your relationship with Pauline? Uh, this is Pauline. She's my mum. She <laughs> once drove past me when I was having my first fight and got out of her car to cheer me on. <laughs> Lee's team, where do you start? Greg, how old were you on this first fight? Twelve. Right. And, and so where was this? At school? Uh, no. Where was it? Um, outside, uh... Outside the music room. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It was in a street. In the street. Yeah. Who were you fighting? I, I honestly can't remember his name. Uh, he was a lad uh, and he was in the year above me. And I remember he had fairly distinctive um, red hair. 
<laughs> Is that why you fought him? <laughs> I fought him uh, um, because he'd fought one of my friends. Oh, OK, so this was like a... Revenge. You, like, you were, like, doing a heroic gesture. Yeah. And he was older than you? Yes. What was your friend I... called? Well, I'm from Shropshire, and he, so he, uh, he was called uh, Chinese Dave. <laughs> Is everyone called Chinese Dave in Shropshire? No, I just think it's a, he, he was called Chinese Dave, and I honestly don't know the reason, because he certainly wasn't Chinese. I think it's because he used to wear a hat. <laughs> uh, no, that would be it. That would be it. That would be it, probably. What I'd was go. your fighting technique, do you recall? It was a sort of... sort of windmill of bones. <laughs> just like this. Windmill of bones? <laughs> I Lame. give you the windmill of bones! <laughs> what was your mum shouting at you to, by way of encouragement? Um, I, I mean, as I recall, it was just get in there. <laughs> get Do him. Do him, yeah. Get, get in there, yeah. son, is what I... And was she there the first time you had sex? <laughs> this was in the street. Your mum was driving... Yeah. ..past you, saw yeah. you... She knew about the attack on Chinese... Dave. Dave. Dave, yeah. It wears a hat. <laughs> so I presume she saw what was going on and thought, oh, it's good that my son is avenging Chinese Dave's. So, did she get out of the car or just do it, it from the did, window? Was, was it a drive-by? She, she got out. You did, who didn't win the fight? Did your mum then... Surely she stepped in and stopped it, or did she say, keep fighting? Well, let me tell you, Patsy, the yeah. fight came to a fairly abrupt end. Why? Uh, and I'm going to give you some very specific detail now. Thank you. Um, because I was chewing polos during the fight. Oh. Uh, the... <laughs> Please, no, you're not going to try and convince us that, that they came out and your mum thought it was teeth. teeth. Hear me out. <laughs> he is, he I, is. I, got I got caught in their mouth and um, literally I spat polos everywhere and my mum went, oh, oh no, it's teeth, it's teeth. What's your mum called? Pauline. Uh, has she got a nickname, like Heckling Pauline? Or anything like that? <laughs> no, although I would tell you she, uh, she has an impressive history because she was in a, a play fight with my... Um, dad once, and he uh, he locked himself in a toilet. Yeah. Uh, and to get to him in the play fight, my mum punched a hole through a door. <laughs> so, so there's obviously there's obviously a violent streak in this one. Yeah. <laughs> it is true though. It's definitely true. That is my mum. Who's right. next? Who are we going to do next? OK, so we'll, we'll, we'll go with David, shall we? Yes. David, just let me recap. Am I right in saying that there was a talk by the police? Yeah. They... At the Cubs? Yeah. And you, you asked one too many questions to the policeman? Yes, I was asking. I was full of questions. <laughs> what kind of questions uh, were you asking? Well, I was asking about various, cr you know, cr issues involved in fighting crime. How old were you? I think I was about eight. Right. What kind of crime fighting <laughs> questions were you asking? Well, you know, there was, there was a lot of... There was a problem, I felt. <laughs> <laughs> Problem with uh, vandalism and graffiti yeah. in the area. Um, uh, uh, you know, at that age, you're supposed uh, to be taking part rather than complaining about <laughs> it. That's <laughs> okay. Different yeah. upbringings. That's fine. <laughs> what, what are the questions? I asked a lot about the uh, the locks uh, in Cagney and Lacey. <laughs> I was at the time very aware of the security measures in all of those flats in New York and the big locks on the doors. And I said, why don't we have locks like that? And how can you know how, how can we keep burglars out if we don't have Locks like that. Right. And the policeman was saying how you can't keep out a determined burglar. Oh. And I was saying, well, why do we lock the doors at all then? <laughs> but I wasn't really aware that he was supposed to be trying to get on with the talk and maybe and the questions would happen at the end and maybe they wouldn't all be asked by me. <laughs> where was this where was this cops? It was in uh, in Headington. Headington. In yeah, where where I grew up. Well I know that. I don't it's think you right. travelled. Yeah. <laughs> I assumed it was where you lived, otherwise yeah. that would be bonkers. Where are you from? Oh, I'm from Newcastle, yeah. but they No, my travel. parents thought about it. <laughs> my parents had heard about a very good Cub Scout group uh, about 400 miles away, and they, <laughs> they thought about driving me there to get the very best training in the <laughs> tying up. Yeah, absolutely. But what they, badges they, did you get, David? Uh, don't talk about that? badges in front of Richard. If it's <laughs> <really>. <laughs> Richard! Uh, remind us once again of your, of your truth. Uh, Pauline your... and I met at the Snoop Dogg gig. Oh, where? where was he playing? playing? Uh, it was at the Forum in Kentish Town. When was this? What year? Last year. Last year. So he and... was called Snoop Dogg, because he's been called a lot of things, well, hasn't he? he? certainly has. In the olden days, he was Snoop Doggy Dog, but now just Snoop Dogg. <laughs> but whereabouts were you in the forum? Where were you, whereabouts were you watching the show from? Well, we met when there was a delay, as there often is at, uh, at rap concerts. There's sort of an hour delay, so For I went why? up to the why, little why bar. Why was there a delay? Cause... Well, because it's Snoop. You don't know one, you don't rush Snoop. <laughs> Who supported what? him? Did he have a support act? Uh, yeah, Corrupt. 
What was that? With a, yes, that with a K. With a K, yeah. wow. With a K. I'd have left up to them. <laughs> what was, what, the, what was his hair like, Snoops? Well, Snoops. How, how was he wearing his hair? He was wearing his hair, he had sort of cornrows. Essentially, he knows all the words, doesn't he? Yeah, hmm. he's definitely read up on this. Yeah, and, well, and, and okay, and so, and then so you guys, your eyes met across the. No, in in this delay, I went yeah. up to there's a little quieter bar upstairs, and I went up there to play a, a bit of uh, Scrabble on my phone. Oh God! Because <laughs> I was with younger people, and they were enjoying the support. They were enjoying the fact that there was a delay, and there was loud music playing. I was enjoying it less. Yeah. Pauline was reading a book. Right. Right. So I thought, okay, she's quite bored as well. Of this thing, so anyway, I'm playing my thing. She said, yeah. "Oh, what are you doing?" Yeah. And I said, oh, "I'm playing Scrabble on my phone." She said, "I didn't know you could play Scrabble on a phone." Right. So I showed right. her, and then we started playing Scrabble on a phone. Have done ever since. And then ever since, well, you're going out with each other now. <laughs> <laughs> you know what, Lee? Early days. Early days. <laughs> okay. Have you actually met up with Maureen since? Pauline. Pauline. <laughs> 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 you're not going to be able to dissect us with those blunt little. Things. So, uh, <laughs> Lee, where is where is this? Uh, where is this leading you? What are you uh, thinking, Lee? Patsy, do we believe any of these people? Because they're all sounding <laughs> chronically untrue. The Chronic, of course, was one of the first albums Snoop was on. Dr. Why didn't you... <laughs> <laughs> um... I could see David in his cub shorts and being being worried about the graffiti. He sort of the sort of person that it would have upset him. And he... I'm intrigued by the, the, this this slight physical resemblance between Greg. And and the yeah. lady. I know what you mean, yeah. Um, uh, do you mind standing up, Greg, again? Would you stand next to this lady you claim to be your mother? Next your to my mum. Well, let's call her a, a woman for now. <laughs> <laughs> right. Now... <laughs> I'm guessing, for this mean average to work out, your dad is the Jolly Green Giant. <laughs> no, but you see, Lee, it's a fact that a son has to be taller than their mum. It's either Richard or Greg, I think. So that's, okay. that's my answer. So you think it's... <laughs> I think it's Richard. You think it's Richard? You think it's Richard or Greg? Yeah. Don't Tim forget Richard. the, um... What are you going to say? The scout hat one, the... <coughs> oh, sorry. Oh, the... oh, sorry, are you still here? The scout hat. <laughs> OK, I need an answer we're and going, I really do need an answer. We're going for David. <laughs> he's trying to double bluff me at the end, so I'm going to so go with David. It's David. And if, he's, if it is David, I'll be so happy now. You're saying it's David? I think it's David. OK, Pauline, would you please reveal your true identity? My name is Pauline. I am Greg's mother. And... <laughs> Pauline is Greg's mum, and she did cheer him on when he had his first ever fight. It must have been awful to see him fighting. Wonderful. Wonderful. <laughs> Thank you very much, Pauline. You're welcome. So, at the end of that round, uh, Lee's team are in the lead by three points to one. <laughs> Which brings us to our final round, Quick Fire Live. We start with. Bob. I can break an apple in half with my bare hands. <laughs> David's team. <laughs> what is your technique? I take it in the hands. Yes. <laughs> are your hands really bare really? at this point? Of course they're bare. Yes. Friction's very much part of this, um, mm. this equation. <laughs> you must pull it, um, I'm going to say east to west. A lot of people think you need to twist. You don't need to twist. You don't need to twist. Really? You, you just don't need to pull twist. apart. Pull it apart. <laughs> How do you get the pull grip? the apple apart? Yeah. Won't your hands just slide away from it? I just thought you'd need to twist. Mm. If you twist, you fail. <laughs> Twisting equals tears. <laughs> so you just grip the apple in your hands <laughs> and then fling them apart, <laughs> and you have two half apples. No, I rip it apart. Yeah. The way you were miming it then, there's like downward pressure from the thumbs, almost as if you're trying to open it like a book. Yeah. <laughs> is, that, is that what it's like? Because I, I can believe that more than the just grip, bang! Yes. <laughs> no, David, that's fair enough. Yes, it's, it's a sort of, you're almost like, you insert... <laughs> it's not that I so wish it was bang, it's yeah. not. No, you're inserting <laughs> the like... thumbs to yeah. try and pull it apart no, that way. No insertion. All right. No, can but, the, but that's downward the pressure. Grip. Downward pressure. And there it is. <laughs> yeah. can, I, 
Yes. So where are the thumbs? Are the thumbs either They're side here, of the, the stalk? You know where the thumbs are, David. <laughs> where, where are the, th are the thumbs either side of the stalk? Yes. No insertional penetration. Just no, absolutely not. No, the, the, the thumbs are used for gripping, not for ripping. That's what oh, I was yeah. talking about. <laughs> <laughs> and if you remember <laughs> that... <laughs> the system yeah. comes yeah. with a catchphrase. Yeah. <laughs> if you yeah. can remember that, you too will be parting you apples. <laughs> How long have you done this for? I have done it for a long time. What I used to do to entertain was I used to take <laughs> hard-boiled eggs, peel them, I'd still do it, and I could take the shell off in one. <laughs> and you, you actually peel the membrane rather than trying to... Don't be all rough-handed and don't... You know, take your time. <laughs> off it comes <laughs> back. <laughs> And when did you, you do that's the correct way to present <laughs> a <bunch of> <laughs> with an well, apple it's this. Yeah. When did you <laughs> When did you first silly. discover that you that you could do the apple? How did it come about? How did it come to be? I can't remember the first time I did it. Can't I can remember? remember the feeling. <laughs> but I can't remember the first time I did it. What was the feeling? The feeling was magnificent. <laughs> <laughs> right, uh, David. Um, is that is that the truth? I don't think so, but it could be. Can mm. we leave it at that? Yeah, <laughs> that's fine. OK, on to the next round. Um, no, we can't. I agree with that. I'd love to see him... Do, I hope it's true, because then they'll make him do it. Yeah. Well, I'd love to see it. Yeah. If it's not true... Make will him they do make it him anyway. try? <laughs> <laughs> so what's it going to be? Oh, I really want it to be true, but it isn't true, I don't think. You can't pull an apple apart, can you? You can't just rip it in <laughs> half. I so, I so want you to be able to. If you and I can't, sure. And I can't. And I can't. I've never tried. Have you ever no, tried? Yeah, if I had an apple true. here, oh, I could have yes, a But I goes. think if those two can't do it, David, with but the most respect... respect. <laughs> Highly unlikely you're going to put it off. Tremendously, frighteningly strong hands, as I found out to my own cost. <laughs> so right. you think it's a lie? Then? I'm afraid I do. Okay. Yeah. Well, I'll go with the giant. You're going to say it's a lie. <laughs> it's All a right, lie. you're saying it's a lie. Bob, were you telling the truth or were you telling a lie? I was telling the truth. Oh. Oh. Yes. Do it. Do it. Well, well, guess what I've got <laughs> under the desk? My trusty box of apples. <laughs> it's a proper apple. Ready, yes. Bob? It's a big one. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> not you, not you, him. Does your husband play cricket? <laughs> Sort of thing. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, where shall I do it? <laughs> I really hope he can't do it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah! Whoa! <laughs> and that noise signals time is up. It's the end of the show, and I can reveal that Lee's team have won by four points Final. to one. <laughs> But it's not just a team game, and my individual liar of the week this week is Richard Osman. <laughs> yes, Richard Osman, he's nothing but a liar, which means that the thousands of people who lost on Pointless, thanks to his adjudication skills, can now seek compensation. <laughs> Good night. <laughs>